it felt like my throat was closing. I couldn't even talk. And my heart is pounding out of my chest. Anxiety level times a thousand. Something's wrong. So I go to a doctor, I do a full blood panel, and everything's right. What is going on with me, right? This probably happened on a Monday. I gotta go back to DJ Thursday. So I remember getting to the venue that Thursday and my heart is pounding out of my chest. I'm here physically and I'm doing this and I'm, and I'm performing at, at a high level, but it's like mentally I may be somewhere completely opposite. Gratitude is the opposite of anxiety. You can't feel both. I just think of like good times that we have together and, and you know, good times that we're gonna have together. I'm not gonna let anxiety take me out of my spot because I love this a lot more than I fear that. That's prominent disc jockey Sacramento's DJ Oasis, and this is an episode today to prove that it is not weak to ask for help if you're struggling with anxiety or depression. For the first time publicly, he opens up about things he's struggling with and how he's winning those battles. And to set the stage, this is a very strong person. He's strong-willed, he's strong mentally, he's strong physically, he's strong spiritually. So he's smashing the stigma that it's weak to say when you're struggling. He's not, and he's gonna prove it. I hope you guys enjoy. It took a lot for me you know, in my whole life, like going in a different direction, you take a medication once and you're like, oh, shit. I snapped out of it, you know? Dude, oh, so you had it, so you had struggled with like some sort of mental depression, struggle. okay? maybe the ADHD, anxiety for sure, mm. but you don't know it until, you know, you get diagnosed and somebody gives you something and then you're like, oh shit. But for me, it worked in like different directions. So they gave me a prescription. It's, it's a, uh, called abuse bar, abuse or something like that. It's a serotonin inhibitor. Okay. And so it's like, okay, well, let's, I'm having, you know, bad anxiety. I'm feeling depressed. I'm just not doing things. So what happened was, you know, hey, take it twice a day for 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever. So cool. Taking it. Don't feel nothing. Don't feel nothing. Don't feel nothing. One day I'm going to go to sleep and you ever like just lay down and it feels like you fall down and you're like you snap out yes. of it? Yes, yes. So that happens, right? And then I have the worst anxiety attack that I've probably had. And morning comes and I'm like, I didn't go to sleep. Like You just laid there? <laughs> I just laid there all night. But now I'm feeling my heartbeat in my throat. I'm feeling like, you know, anxiety level times a thousand. So I'm like, something's wrong. Like, I've never went through this. Like, something's definitely wrong. I'm not even, it's not registering to me that it's the medication mm. because I've been taking it for 30 days and nothing, you know, but it, it I guess it takes 30 days to yeah. kick in or whatever. Three, four weeks. Yeah. So it kicks in and it's like ramped me up so high. So now I go to actually the, I, I didn't want to go to the downtown center. So I came out here and um, they're like, so what's going on? I was like, I didn't want to be like, oh, I can't sleep. I'm like, my heart's pounding. Like, I was so wrong with my heart. And um, so they're like, you know, they're running all the tests. They're like, yeah, you sound good. Is you know, are you sure there's done, you know, something going on? I'm like, no. So then I'm driving home and I'm like, what's going on with me? So that still doesn't click that it's the medication. So I'm like, I need to go to church. I need to do this. What are like, so I'm just thinking my anxiety is overblown for some reason. Mm. So I'm like, let me try this way. Cause I've done tried everything else. Right. I don't want to, uh, you know, take a, a um, a benzo or something that, like that to calm down. You know, yeah. I'm drinking water. I'm trying to eat healthy. Slippery slope. Yeah. So, um, so I'm like, let me try, you know, religion. Like I remember when I was a kid, I used to have bad anxiety also. Hmm. So it was like, what, what were your symptoms as a kid? As a kid, mm -hmm. it was like disassociation. Like, what do you mean by that? Um, so if you look up, uh, anxiety, right. One of the main symptoms that you, you could have is disassociation. So I don't know if you ever like, get in a situation where you wake up and you're like, man, I feel like I'm in like a dream. Like I'm in a dream state or something. Right. Or like, I think I know. So like, almost like you're watching yourself live your life, but you're not actually present. Almost. Living your so life. when okay. I was a kid, I remember looking at my hands and I'd be like, man, this feels like it's not real. Hmm. Like, and it's called disassociation. Cause you're wow. so in your head, you're disassociated with like real life. You have to snap out of it. So like disassociation was a big one when I was a kid. And then always, panicking like worst case scenario something's gonna happen mm. um that guy's walking over there what if he shoots at it you know mm -hmm. like just any any type of thing like it was always worst case scenario and i remember just being a kid and not really being able to enjoy anything because i'm always thinking something's gonna happen something bad's gonna happen something you know like um, impending doom yeah yeah so um you know starting to grow up you don't think that's abnormal, right? Because it's like, whatever. And, you know, you start thinking, like, what was that? So now I'm getting into, you know, my early 20s. 
And I remember um, drinking a lot of the rock stars and all that. So it just mm-hmm. started to become you know, mm-hmm. popular, drinking a lot of caffeine. And I'm taking a road trip. And I keep having these like adrenaline rushes, these adrenaline pumps. And I'm like gav- having basically these like mini unprovoked panic no. attacks. Yeah, unprovoked. Damn. Literally just driving. I remember going to sleep that night and waking up and feel like super disassociated. And I'm like, damn, I haven't felt like this since I was a kid. What's going on? Um, but I just always remembered if I stay busy and try to like not think about it, it goes away. Hmm. At this time, I still don't know it's anxiety, right? Hmm. Like this is now ongoing for 20 years because- Dude, I didn't know that was an anxiety symptom either. There's yeah. probably someone that's gonna listen to this and be like, that's anxiety? No, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. And, and my whole point is like, you know, educating, right? Because as a kid, you know, in, in the 90s, 2000s, you don't know what anxiety depression is especially Espe- back then dude. yeah especially yeah. you know like you know in my heritage like you know i come from a, a very hispanic mexican culture family so like if you say something like that it's like you're on drugs what mm-hmm. are you talking about you know what i mean like go get this he's going crazy go get this guy checked right but you know maybe like i said um earlier it was like if you could help these kids mentally that could shape the whole future of life period like right like coming up you know, you, you take kids from bad neighborhoods or whatever it may be, and you help them mentally that you don't have to do this. You don't, you know, maybe they're joining gangs because, you know, they feel like they're they're by themselves or they mm. feel, you know, like they need somebody, they need a backbone, right? It gives them confidence, you know, and you teach them to be, you know, mentally more stronger that you don't need that. You could do this or you could do that. And, you know, even like, like I said, I think maybe as a kid, I was uh, depressed also. So... What did that look like? You know, just being off task, like, you know, one of those kids in class that just always has her head down sleeping or like, why didn't I have no energy? You know, mm. I'm, I'm a young kid. You know what I mean? Like um, and interest decreasing too. interest stuff. decreasing yeah. all that. So it's like, you know, you, you, I look back on it now. It's like, fuck, if I would have got help, I could have maybe went to Penn State or Harvard, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. because I was always a sharp person, but it just, it didn't get brought out of me because nobody, you know, just, you know, it's regular life. I remember even telling my mom when I was a kid, like, you know, I feel like something's fake, right? Mm-hmm. Like it feels like a fake reality or something. She's like, wait, what? Like, what do you mean? And she's probably like, oh man, what do I do? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. You know? <laughs> so, but now it's like, now that I'm educated on all that, you look at like, oh, that's a symptom. That's a symptom of this. That's a, mm. and, you know, I'm a big YouTube guy. So it's like, anytime I need to know something, I'm going to run to YouTube. Or, you know, what is, is this a symptom? Is this a, like, and you'd be surprised on how many different things like, you know, come about from, you know, you know, a lot of people, they, you didn't clean your house or you don't do this. You, you know, you pay, you may be in just a, a bad mind state. You know what I mean? You mm. need something to snap you out, you know? Um, but yeah, we went way off track. So no, that dude, this is, so this is super helpful. originally. Um, so yeah, so I take that medication. I'm going through it, right? It's, it's about three days deep. I'm, I'm going, I went to the ER still, it still hasn't clicked to me that it's a abuse prone or whatever it is. Yeah. And, um, so you know, I'm trying religion. I'm trying. So it's not wearing off. This is, this isn't like you stop taking it one day and it's gone the next day. No, mm. it probably about the same amount of time it took to get in your system. Yeah. It takes to get out. So I'm just like, yo, am I stuck like this? Like I'm my arm, everything's I'm sweating. Like, it's like when you Google the uh, anxiety symptoms, it's every symptom times 10, mm. right? Like, and I'm just thinking like, I'm, I'm stuck. from that med. From that medication. Ooh. So I'm like, I'm thinking like, I'm stuck. Like, I'm stuck like this. How am I going to live life? Mind you that this probably happened on a Monday. I got to go back to DJing and all this shit Thursday. Oh, shit. To downtown, you know, like going to go do all my venues. So I remember getting to the venue that Thursday and my heart is pounding out of my chest. I'm moving quick as hell. Like I'm DJing, I'm scratching, I'm doing all this type of shit quick. And I'm like, damn, it feels like I'm on drugs. Like, mm. and so then around that time, it starts clicking like, oh shit, it's the medication. So I went to my original doctor that Friday, like, hey, this medication's having me haywire. He's like, oh, you know, some of these have side effects and we never really nail it. Like on the first medication, we got to try different things. Yeah. So basically what it did is it made me manic. Mm. So that's why he's like, okay, so you're probably bipolar because it made you manic. Um, so he's like, okay, so we'll try this cocktail of drugs. And I'm like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to take none of that shit no more, you know? So 
at that point, but then I said, okay, well, out of any situation, there's bad and then there's some good. What happened in the midst of that that week was I'm on Amazon. I'm ordering eye strips. I've, I bought teeth whitener. I um, I cleaned my whole house. I finished a couple projects, right? So I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I'm doing these things subconsciously that, you know, I'm trying to make myself better. Like, hmm. I'm trying to better myself. In the midst of that week, I was running a mile. Hmm. I hadn't been to the gym in a year and a half. I was um, eating right. And my discipline was highly there, like waking up, drinking a green drink, going to the gym, drinking, you know, things of water, things I hadn't done in, in a few years. So like it snapped me out of this, like whatever depression or whatever I was in deeply, it woke me up. And you didn't you know? even know. I didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice because I was sitting here focusing on the symptoms of anxiety that I didn't notice everything else that was positive that I was doing, right? So now I got my facts straight, it's the drugs, all this type of stuff, like, you know, okay, so now where do I go from here? So now I just got to control these anxiety symptoms and I could carry on with my life. Slowly but surely, the, you know, that it starts working out of my system mm -hmm. um, and I'm on the right path. You know, um, a month later, I start to feel it a little bit. I'm starting to fall back, right? The depression, you mean? The depression. So okay. I'm like... You know, I don't want to go to the gym today. I'd write, oh man, that Taco Bell looks good. Or mm. you know this, and I'm like, oh. it's so sneaky depression too. Yeah, it's never yeah. obvious. Like, hey, you're gonna feel really crappy like that. You're gonna know it's depression. It's it's just so sneaky. It's it's sneaky the Dang way it, it works. It's sneaky, and, and it's like like I said, I wouldn't have even known because this was regular life to me, right? Like, mm. um. So did you end up going back on meds because you had a little bit of relief, even though it was the wrong med, wrong dose, or did you stay off? Them? So. In that, in the midst of that time, I mean, I it freaked me out. So I'm like, to be honest, so it was like, you know, I said, I'm not gonna do that. Be I'm not gonna try other meds, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, those might have side effects. Because in in the midst of all that, that anxiety that I felt was like, oh shit, this is as bad as it could get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so it's like I I dread to go back to that, right? But then again, it's like, well, fuck. I might have been better off because it woke me up and I was doing all these things, but it's just like you got to weigh, you know, the uh, the pros and the cons. You know mm. what I mean? So to me, it was like, let me try to do this naturally, right? Like, let how, me try. How long push. ago was this, by the way? This is January, February. Okay, so very recent. This is this year. So you're trying yeah. to do it naturally now. So I'm trying to do it naturally. How's it going? You know, like yeah. this. Caffeine yeah. is what, you know, it's like, okay, let me get back to work. You know, let me yeah. wake, wake up and like, you know, it's a, it's it's motivated by caffeine definitely now. Like that energy that I need to push forward, you know, exercise while I still ride my bike. I still, you know, do things with my son, but it's not like I'm going to the gym and running a mile. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so it is, it did cut back. I don't have that mental capacity to do what I was doing. You know, like the fast food every now and then that came back, you mm -hmm. know, um, so it slowly creeps back. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say like you you don't do meds, you know, and you're going to work 100% the way you did on them. It just it's not reality, but at the same time you can get out of that hole, you know. It's a hmm. uh, positive thinking, you know, um just you know, trying to do it and you know, it it helps a lot too if you have people around you that know your situation that could help you push forward, you know. Hmm. Um and you know, I, I had put on my Instagram probably about two months ago when I, or no, it was probably about, it was probably about the same time. Um, I just wanted to see, you know, if other people were going through the same thing I was going through. So I'm like, what do you guys do for anxiety? And I must have had hundreds of comments, hundreds, 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 like, try this. I do this. Hey, man, I get it too. Like, but a lot of it was like, oh my God, you're so brave for, for coming forward and, and admitting it. And I was like, oh, shit, is this like frowned upon to, you know, admit No, it, a lot of people are going through it. And when they see someone like you, successful, hardworking, mm. um, I don't know if macho is the right word, but um, what's the fucking masculine, you yeah, know, yeah. just a, a strong, dominant type of personality who's saying I'm struggling with these things. It yeah. gives people relief. And they're like, man, most people aren't admitting that. And I think a lot more people are going through it than. Yeah, no, 100%. You see, uh, this it's not as rare as you think. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You, when you're in it, you feel like it's only you, right? Um, 
you know, so it's like seeing other people go through and talking to people, but that caught me off guard to where it's like, damn, was I not supposed to say that? Hmm. And I'll be honest, like I hopped on probably about three podcasts where I touched on it and then I'm like, hey, cut cut that part out. Let me yeah, yeah. Do that. Because I just felt like, you know, in any industry, you're supposed to look like you're always winning. And if you let them know like, oh, you slipped, it's like, see, I told you it wasn't perfect. You mm. know what I mean? And it's it's a shitty reality of everything, but that's just the way things are. You know what I mean? Like, um, you don't show your flaws. You're always, you got to stay winning. You always, mm. you know, you don't post negative stuff on your Instagram. It's all positive and like wins, right? So it was like, you know what? That's why, you know, I, it was probably perfect timing to come talk to you because it was like, I need to tell this story because yeah. it may help somebody else going through things Definitely. and let them know like there is light at the end of that tunnel, you know what I mean? And there's other people going through it, you know? And, and like I said, people always comment on me, man, you're so lucky you're doing this and they don't know what I'm going through mentally. Mm. Like, you know, I'm here physically and I'm doing this and I'm, and I'm performing at, you know, the, the space that I perform at, but a very high level <laughs> at a high level, but it's like mentally I may be somewhere completely, you know, opposite like um but yeah do you think that this you, first of all do your parents have any of this stuff like do you th basically do you think it's it a genetic was genetic or do you so, think it's life and, have you thought about that i'm pretty sure it's genetic yeah because um so like i said i come from a very you know mexican heritage like it's you know, like you said work hard then we come home, we eat dinner, you know, and then we go to bed, we wake up, you know. So it's like, you know, I started thinking back. And I remember my, so my grandfather, my grandparents raised me, right? My mom lived at their house their whole life. I was raised by my grandparents. And I remember my grandpa always saying like, man, I'm just like, don't do this because it makes me nervous. Like he was always, oh, don't, he, he don't, was that yeah, he was that guy like, Tense. don't drive with your hand out the window because a car could hit it and you know like okay paranoid he was Even, paranoid yeah. right but that paranoid is is almost the same thing as anxiety because mm -hmm. you're thinking like this may happen so mm -hmm. don't do this because this may happen don't do that because that's may happen oh and and that's like what you were going through with the, this guy might shoot me yeah as yeah a little kid. so okay. that's how i was raised but you know like i said it's a double-edged sword right because i've never been to jail i've never broke a bone i've never been in a car accident i've never you know what i mean because like i said i'm thinking three times ahead you know three mm -hmm. times forward to where it's like i'm not gonna make these mistakes because i'm gonna avoid doing this and i'm gonna avoid doing that oh, and that's I'm avoid a pitfall too because you're like okay the paranoid thinking works well where's the line how paranoid should i stay where do i pull it back yeah. that'd be so confusing but i mean it's really it's not confusing once you once it's your thought process, right? Hmm. Like, that's just the way I think. So what's the flip side of that? It takes a joy out of everything. Oh. It takes a joy out of Let's go canoeing on Folsom Lake. No. <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> Where do you want yeah, me to start? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, and then it's just like, to me, it's like Folsom Lake canoeing, news news flashes of like, this guy drowned. That, yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Mm. Like, let's go do this. Like, it takes a joy to everything, right? Mm. Like some people live life freely and then, you know, it's, I'm damn near envious of that. Like, damn, I want to live life free and just have some beers and driving, you yeah. know, like, but it's, it's that way of thinking that's always kept me, you know, succeeding in life and winning. But I mean, is it, if you don't get no joy at anything, you know what I mean? Like, nah, you know, so that's a heavy, that's question. why I said it's a double-edged sword, right? You, you know, um, the stress around that that thinking you know what i mean it's like i don't know but back to that question so being genetic right so my grandpa always had that type of thought process mm -hmm. and i would always ask him you know how did your dad die and it was like oh he was crazy he was alcoholic right mm. and i'm like what do you mean by crazy you know <laughs> what i mean because you know like i said right if you get people in the right mental space for them you subtract a lot of the problems in the world. Why is there alcoholics? Why is there drug addicts? Why are people addicted to caffeine? Why are, you know, why are people addicted to porn? Why are people, these are all mental problems, right? Mm -hmm. But if you could help all these people's mental problems, even even the murderers and the, and the drug dealers and the gang members and the product, like these are all people in different mind states, right? But if you could get them to think properly, then you could help everybody, which would initially help the world. So it's like, 
you know, he was, so going back to that, my grandpa's like, oh, he was crazy. He was alcoholic. So the flip side of alcohol, what? It calms down mm. your anxiety, your paranoia, your everything. Mm. Just like, a, uh, you know, just like medication would, a benzo, right? It calms you down. So it's easy to become an alcoholic. It's easy to become a drug addict because it's helping you cope with whatever's going on in your head. Um, so I'm like, shit, well, maybe it's it's starting from the top. Like my great grandfather had mental problems. My grandfather had it. My mom had severe anxiety, you know, and I'm seeing it and it's just something genetic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, well, shit, how far is it going to go down? Like I have a six year old son and I'm like now watching him and when he's like, you know, oh, you could fall on your bike or, you know, this. And I'm like, shit, he's thinking negative. Like, how do I keep this boy happy? Right. Because mm. that's any parent is let's keep our kids happy. Let's keep them safe. Safe. Yeah. Um, and I, I try and I try to, you know, not be over the top when it comes to like, don't do that. You're going to fall and break your arm. You're going to do this. Like, don't get on the skateboard. Like, I try to have a balance of that. Right. Because I don't want to scare him. I don't want him to avoid things, but I also want him to be cautious of what can happen if this is done wrong, right? Hmm. Uh, don't play in the street. Like, don't, you know, if we're going to the candy store, don't get the jawbreaker, you could choke on that and mm -hmm. get the gum, you know, or, you know, like all those type of things, right? Um, but without being over the top, because I, I definitely don't want him to go through what I had to go through as a kid or growing up to where you're always super precautious about everything. It's just like- And having no fun, like you, you said. Yeah, having no fun, yeah. It takes yeah. a joy out of life, you know? But still, you know, give them that, like, hey, this, you don't want to do this, you know, because of this, you know? Yeah. I also think it's genetic. Yeah. And <clears throat> well, I think there's, I think there's two kinds. I definitely know people that life hit them super hard they get depressed, they take a medication, life levels out, they go off the medication and they're good. And I know other people like you and myself where you don't, it's been like that so long, you don't even know that you're struggling with things. And somehow yeah. you stumble into a situation where you try medication or you try uh, an illegal drug or whatever it is, and you get relief from symptoms you didn't know you were suffering from. Yeah. And that wakes you up. You're like, Whoa, I don't know if this was ever going to get better. And I think, uh, I definitely think people are genetically predisposed to it. And then when you have your own kids and you see them get older and you're like, that's the same behavioral pattern, you know, it kind of reinforces that. But I do, dude, I think, I think that there's situations that people aren't going to get out of without meds and you can tough it out. Yeah, sure. But yeah, yeah. how much joy are you missing? How much of your personality is suffocated under that wet blanket of depression where it just feels like, gravity's 10 times as strong and yeah. thoughts are dark and interests don't seem interesting. Yeah. And like you, you can't physically do things. You want to just be in bed. Everything's a, a downer. Everybody hates you. That sort of stuff. Like you don't really have to live like that. I'm not saying the answer is medication. There's yeah. a lot of things to try before mm -hmm. medication. There's a lot, but if you've tried them all <laughs> and they're not working. Um, yeah. And like I said, I mean, you know, there, there may be a time where you fall off that track. Oh man, running for me is like the best thing ever. I run every day and it gets rid of that, you know? Um, but then you stop running like, and then what it comes back, like, and these are just things that you, you know, are going to have to face. Like, I don't think people know how far it could go depression wise and how far it could go anxious wise. Like mm. there's been times where I feel like I'm driving, my throat is closing and I'm, <clears throat> <gasps> like a you know it feels panic attack. physical it feels physical yeah. right like you know it it feels physical your heart you know your 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 chest tightens up and it's like it feels completely physical and unless somebody's been in that situation you can't explain to them like mm -hmm. what's going on you know what i mean because it feels it's it's crazy it starts here but it feels physical right and on the other end of like depression, like I don't feel like cleaning those shoes or I don't yeah. feel like cleaning the house or I don't, I just don't want to do that today. Out. I want to eat shitty. I want to just like, you know, and it's like, damn, like how come I don't have the resistance or the discipline to not do that or to do that? Like, you know, how many times you look in your backyard and the grass is dead or this and that and you just walk past it again, you know, and it's like, that's not normal. Mm. You know what I mean? And then, you know, what helps me too is like, well, what, you know, a therapist told me is like, nothing's normal. So quit using the word normal. Nothing's huh. normal, right? <laughs> um, but, um, you know, what helps me realize is like thinking back into little mental spaces that I've been in throughout, you know, my life and saying, 
man, that was a great space. How do I get to that? Or this was a great, you know, a great time for me. I know one of, one of the most joyous times in my life was, you know, the birth of my son. Hmm. And I feel like everything that I went through pre that, you know, anxiety, depression, having my son relieved it. Hmm. Right. So a few years of having my son, you know, um, and being with, you know, his mother and having a family household, I was, I, I was back to normal as you would say it. Right. 23 happens and my grandfather dies at the end of 23. Um, that night I remember, you know, the, these whole years I'm going through depression, anxiety, depression, anxiety, you know, but I, it's not, it's not hitting me. Right. It's just, I'm, I guess I'm feeling, you know, whatever 23 happens. Um, and not, I remember not hitting you as in like, it's not like throwing me off of my life. Okay. It's just like, yeah. Well, you, you lived know, with it for so long. You've developed coping mechanisms. Yeah. And, and like I said, it just, it gradually here and there. <laughs> right. So I'm starting, I mean, obviously I'm looking at my pictures. I'm gaining weight. I'm mm -hmm. eating bad. My complaint, you know, so yeah, I'm noticing, but I'm not really fully, you know, like I said, I'm in this daze. Mm -hmm. Um, so I remember that night, you know, um, I'm anxious to go to bed. Like I'm tossing and turning and I get a phone call. Almost like I felt it coming. Phone call at 3 a.m. You know, something happened with your grandfather go to his house. I remember going to his house, he had heart, he had a heart attack. So I remember following the ambulance down to Sutter. Um, and they're just like, there's really nothing we could do, you know? Like, Damn. so he dies. I remember coming back to my house after basically like my family's there and they're like, you know, he, you know, we're watching him. You hear the flat line. And it's like, nah. that's it, right? And for me, it was like, you know, my family, everybody's, you know, we're all in tears or whatever. And I just remember like, I need to go home. I have mm. work tomorrow. Something, you know, and I'm I'm in shambles. And I'm, you know, I remember I got home and I'm just in my bed. I'm crying myself to sleep, right? And at that moment, it's like, I, that's, maybe, that's what made me realize, you know, no one's coming to check on you. Mm. You know, like... Um, next day I wake up, go throughout my, you know, I'm, I'm still crying all day long. Like I'm in shambles and I don't know why, but I, I went to work that night hmm. and my eyes are swollen. I'm just so dis disoriented. Come back, come back home. And I think the main thing was like, I can't fail because now I don't have anybody. And, you know, that's basically your father dying, right? Like, you, you know, so it's like, who's going to help me? So now it's all on me or, you know. So I think that's part of the reason why I went to work. But um, I remember mm -hmm. coming home the next day and that, you know, it was, it's um, Monday now. And I'm like, man, I don't feel right. Like something's wrong. Like, let me go to the hospital. And that's now the anxiety. Yeah. And at the time, I don't know, you know, and I'm not thinking it's anxiety. I'm like, you know, at the time, like I'm feeling symptoms of like pain in my stomach or some shit. So you I'm can like, do that. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like pain in my stomach. And they're like, oh, really? What's your pain level? You know, this is, they give you a CAT scan. Oh, everything looks normal. They found a couple of kidney stones, you know, nothing crazy, right? And I remember leaving there and I'm not satisfied. Like, I'm like, no, something's your wrong. Your intuition. Something's yeah. wrong, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm going home, but it's 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 not intuition. It's just the anxiety. Like, okay. nope, something's still wrong. Like, mm. so I go to a doctor. I do a full blood panel. Everything's right. So I'm like, fuck, what is going on with me, right? So mind you, this is 2023 now. So this is the end of December. Now we're going into 2023. Um, and then, so you've been two years living alone, and then your grandpa died. Now going into 2023, yeah, like, okay. you know, okay, so what do I do now, right? So shit, this anxiety is really messing with me. Like telling a doctor at the time, this doctor's like, you know what, I'll prescribe you something, you know, just take them twice a day, whatever. I'm like... This is, I don't know anything about medication at this point. And so I start taking these things twice a day and I'm like, shit, I do feel some relief, right? I'm going to the club, I'm drinking. I'm like, shit, for some reason when I drink now, uh, I'm getting wasted. I'm getting wasted. <laughs> so I remember doing my mixes on the radio and I'm listening to this Post Malone song and it's like, um, I think it, I forget the name of the song, but it's like something on the benzos. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what are benzos? I'm like, huh. Oh, that's the medication I take. And then I just started <laughs> researching. 
And it's like, oh, clodopins are benzos, which are fucking the most iconic thing that everybody knows is fucking uh, Xanax, yeah, right? bars. Same thing. So I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like, oh, man, right? How long had you been on them at that point? Damn near almost a year. Okay. You right. know, twice a day, on and off though, right? Like only when I felt anxious. But on the on the prescription, it says take twice a day. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got to follow the prescription. So I remember <clears throat> it was probably about, august and i tell my friend you know after after the club event i said i don't want to take these pills i don't want to drink anymore something's off mm -hmm. like and i think at that point i've i hit depression so low mm -hmm. that just nothing's bringing me joy so i'm like i don't want to take the pills anymore and i don't want to take i don't want to drink anymore so um i was like i don't know what's going to happen but just get my back like when we go and do these events right yeah and um so like like I said, nothing hits you immediately. Everything comes like gradually, yeah. right? So I remember my son's first day of school. Um, this is still in August, and I don't know why, but it felt like my throat was closing. I couldn't even talk, and I'm like, I need, I need to go to the hospital, right? I remember I drank a big ass coffee, so that mm -hmm. probably like mm -hmm. put the icing on the cake. So I remember going to the hospital, and they're like, while well, you're breathing, like. You know, this is where you check in. And I'm like, yo, my yeah, heart's no pounding. Kidding. I can't breathe. My throat's closing. And they're just like, well, you're breathing fine. So, you know, there's nothing we could do for you. And I'm like, yo, I st I think it's because I stopped taking these anxiety pills. Like I need it. They're like, we don't give you those here. Hmm. So I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like, okay. Well, I could go home, take one of them, feel relief, or I could just go cold turkey now, right? How many days had it been since you stopped where those symptoms hit? Because it's basically withdrawals, right? They're basically withdrawals or what I think it was is um, this is the first time that I felt anxious in a situation. So it's like everything okay. is built up there. And it's just waiting for that collision, right? Mm. Um, so I'm like, you know, what do I do now? And I remember – this is a week before Soul Bloom. So this is probably one of the biggest events that I've done. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these pills again, but it's only going to be for this event. And I remember taking one before the event. I'm drinking. I'm back, I'm back to my normal mode, right? Like, I feel good again. And then I stop. And then I remember, um, you know, I said, okay, I'm not going to take them no more. And then come... So that was August. I remember going September, not taking anything. October comes, I go to Aftershock. Hmm. And I remember feeling, um, I was getting like vertigo, bad vertigo. And I'm like, something's wrong, dude. I'm getting this bad vertigo. I'm getting dizzy. So I go to the doctor, I have some type of infection. They give me antibiotics. So like, I'm not, so I'm, I'm pretty like, when it comes to medication, I just hate taking it. So I'm like, well, I'm only gonna take these antibiotics. I'm not gonna take anything else. So. You know, I take these antibiotics, I get over like whatever sickness I got. And then um, from then on, it's just rolling, 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 and I'm good. Hmm. Um, then come December, and it's like, I'm waking up, I'm just feeling like back to that, like something's like just not right. I don't have any energy, right? So then that's when he prescribes yeah. me these serotonin pills. And I'm like, damn. So now I'm damn near four or five months without taking anything, three, you know, three or four months. And he's like, take these serotonin pills. And I'm like, well, shit, they're not benzos. They're not this. So let's just try the serotonin shit. And then that's where I had that episode, hmm. you know, to where it's like it ramped me up so high that it's like this is a different type of anxiety. But this is like anxiety, right? I can't, can't stop moving. Um, so I went through that. And that going through that 2023 was enough for me to be like, I'm not taking medication because yeah. I could see all these different directions this can take you, you know, like, and I know the the timelines are all like this, this, this story should have probably been before the serotonin because no, now the serotonin. No, it's, but, um, it's a natural conversation. People relate to that. But yeah, so it's like that alone, but mind you that I'm doing like, you know, obviously Instagram's like your accolades, right? Mm. So you could go through my 2023 and it's like, nah, this dude's killing it. Yeah, like, that's how I felt. I yeah. went through it. <laughs> so, and I'm going, I'm like, I'm choking on air when you see me on those goddamn stages. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, and it's like, I'm, 
and a lot of shit that, uh, you know, the anxiety, one of the main things is they say, don't let it hold you back from anything, right? Mm -hmm. If it's like, yo, I gotta, I'm feeling anxious. I just drank a coffee. I'm supposed to go perform with the Kings right now. It's like, I don't want to do that because I can't be in front. Like, can't let it stop you. Once mm -hmm. you let it stop you, now you're backtracking, All right? Different. And yeah. that could, you could end up in your house and you don't want to leave your house. It could get that bad, right? And I'm, I was supposed to be pushing all the way forward. I'm, I've done turn down gigs to go do, you know, halfway around the world. Cause I'm thinking third world country, if I have an episode, they're going to be like, this dude's fucking crazy. Put him mm. in a psych ward, you know? So I'm like, I've turned down a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Because I just didn't know what it was going to be like, especially mm. in 2023 where I'm going through all this mm -hmm. and the beginning of 2024, like what headspace am I going to be in, you know, when I get somewhere or I have to be in an airplane for five hours or, you know, yeah. whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, you know, it's, it's still to this day, like, I, you know, like I said, it's not too far from, you know, when I just went through all that. So, yeah. um, do you have a line now where if I feel like this, I'm going to try another med or are you done forever? Honestly, um, <laughs> I have my mentality now is like, what's the worst that could happen? Right. You faint. You know, long term stress and anxiety. <laughs> That's savage. It's savage, <laughs> but but it's just a reality, right? Yeah. Because you gotta you're fighting yourself hmm. ultimately, right? Anxiety, depression, you're fighting yourself. Your brain is fighting you. So it's like you gotta think like, okay, what's the real problem here? You know, why don't you wanna do this or why don't you wanna do that? Um and it sucks, you know, because you could feel the buildup. I mean, oh, I got anxiety and I'm drinking a fucking Trenta coffee. <laughs> like, you know, but it's uh, it's it's weird, man. Like mental challenges is something that like I feel like you just really have to be in to to really know what it's like. Yeah. Um, because you can't explain it to somebody. Because, no. you know, even when my mom would have panic attacks when I was a kid, she'd be like, I can't breathe. And I'm like, well, if you can't breathe, how are you talking? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But you just don't know until you actually get into it. Especially severe cases like what you're talking about. People that haven't gone through that, they mm. just think you need to tighten your bootstraps. You need to tough it out. It, yeah. It's like, no, no, no. There's, there's something physically wrong with me. This depression, yeah. anxiety is so bad. It's affecting me physically. And there's people that just can't relate to that. So they think it's not a real thing. That's, that's the toughest situation for me is when people think you just gotta, you just gotta tough it out. You yeah. Know? You no, just gotta, I mean, you, you know, can't in some cases. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, can't, yeah. I mean, right. you can, but it's just your quality of life's going to degrade. Oh, You're going to isolate. People are going to stop being around you. They, you know, it's yeah. not fun. No, hundred percent. And I think that's like, that's when they say you get help, right? It's like when your quality of life or, Everyday living it be, is becoming a struggle. That's when mm -hmm. you have to go get meds or therapy and, and all that. Specifically, that's like, like you said, not doing the lawn. I mean, it can go as far yeah. as not taking showers. I've been yeah, there, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, in the movies, it's always like you see the guy on the couch and there's all like, usually it's because they had a breakup, right? Yeah. And yeah. this guy's depressed <laughs> and there's food wrappers everywhere around him and he hasn't showered in weeks. Like, yeah. They didn't make that up. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> see, I, I, I've never got to that point because I'm always like, I always have to keep a standard of living or a standard of, uh, you know, for myself stepping out in the public eye. So, so that's another thing. So you've never let it get there, but it doesn't mean you haven't felt bad enough for that to happen. You just don't let it and keep moving forward. Cause that's one thing that really throws people off is I've never looked like that guy in that movie where mm -hmm. I'm unshowered and there's food everywhere, but it doesn't mean you're not suffering the same as him. You no, know? 100%, 100%. So stay open. Did yeah. you ever develop any addiction issues to try to self cope or anything like that? You know, the, the drinking was probably like, it became a norm. Like, oh, we're at the clubs, we're at a bar, we're at a show. But I started to notice maybe this is everybody's normal, right? You're going to go to the state fair. Oh, I'm going to have a couple beers over there, a couple drinks. I'm going to go to a concert. I'm going to have a couple beers. I'm going to have a couple drinks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to a club. I'm going to go. Then it starts to being like, you're going everywhere and drinking. And well, your job, you're always at a yeah. concert or a club. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that was the other thing too. It was like the alcohol was free everywhere. it's like everywhere free, yeah. it's getting handed to socially me. acceptable too. socially so yeah so it's like it, it became normal but i noticed like i noticed early on right when i first started doing the clubs like you know i'd get stomach aches and i'll be like if i drink i'll be fine hmm. like so I, I knew that well now i knew that back then there was anxiety it's it's you know i'm getting stomach aches i'm feeling nauseous i have a couple shots i'm good again hmm. so then that carries on for 10 years and it's like it becomes normal right 
Um, so I knew that like maybe you know this isn't normal. This isn't normal to come out and drink every every event. Hmm. But you know, like I said, that's the way people live. You know what I mean? Like, so it makes you think: Are all these people going through different mental things to where it's like I I'm going to, now they sell beer and alcohol at movies. Hmm. So now there's anything that you do. Here's alcohol. Here's beer. Cool shit. If it's available, I'm a I'm a drink. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I've never been the type of person that drinks at home. I've never mm -hmm. been the type of person that goes to a restaurant and has a drink with their food. Um, it was always I drink when I work. Weird, right? Hmm. A lot of the opposite of people. They well, it makes they, sense. They drink your job, you yeah. know, but, but the, definitely a lot opposite. of people they, they drink so. <laughs> Um, and that became a, a That's saying. Funny to like, say I only loud. drink when I work. I only drink at work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, but you know, it was like, so that's like nowadays, you know, that's, that's how I try to help people. Right. Like, do you need, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but it's like, we don't need a drink before we go there. We don't need hmm. to always get drunk. Like, you know, I like to drive somewhere and then be able to drive home mm -hmm. and not have to worry about shit. But you know, there's a, I mean, it's a, a society, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's people that get home and they crack a beer they don't wait to get home you know there's people that wake up they drink a couple shots before they had to work That's rough, yeah. um there's you know alcohol alcoholism is real and i'm sure if they did a study on how many people you know actually drink a lot you know you look on instagram every every outing or social activity is drinking mm -hmm. like um so yeah i mean just like anybody else socially right yeah. like i've never at home drank like crazy or anything like that um does weed help you ever tried that so i got i've always been high school i remember i got high and i had my first panic attack i mm. felt that disassociation mm. i felt um you know i just felt like at the time i'm explaining to my mom i feel like i'm in another world mm -hmm. like i feel like wild right um so since then i've always been iffy on it right it makes me paranoid it makes me you know whatever so i never really tried it again as an adult that's um, like a bad tequila experience you, yeah you're never gonna go back <laughs> every every now and then like you know if i'm drunk then this is you know years years ago but if i'm drunk and to say okay cool i'll take a hit or you know like um but it have to be where i'm drunk and in a calm state of mind mm. and never sober then i'm like what do i feel what do i feel yeah, yeah, what do yeah. i feel yeah um so weed i've never done drugs at mm. all i've always been i've always been scared to do ecstasy cocaine molly any of that shit like that's a good thing <laughs> um because I've, i think i've always been scared of, of not having control over myself or mm. feeling like going to the hospital and being like yo i am tripping out and they're gonna be like, yeah, you're a stupid ass. Go sit in the corner until it wears off. Like, you know, so it's like I've always avoided that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because it just sounds to me like a nightmare because I'm already an anxious person. Now, what if I have a panic attack while on one of these? Like, now I'm fucked, right? Dude, that's, yeah, that's scary. Yeah. So, did you find anything that helped besides the drinking and the. I mean, not really, to be honest. Just like, been eating it for decades. Man, that's brutal. Eating it. It's, yeah, it's brutal, man. Like, you know, and, and, the crazy part, you know, I'm a little overweight, but I, my blood pressure's fine. Everything's fine. So, I mean, maybe it adapted my body to take on stress. Like, as a kid, hmm. as, let me knock on wood because it's fucking, <laughs> end up having a heart attack or something. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I, I made, that's what I think. Cause I mean, a guy my size and as much stressful stuff, like, you would think the blood pressure might be a little off, or, you know, you might have my cholesterol's fine, like all that type of shit. It's hmm. like, I don't have diabetes. Like, and like I said, knock on wood, because things could change in the blink of an eye. But I don't know. I've, I've learned to, like, cope with it, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, like I said, it's on you. It's all on, you know, shifting your thoughts, right? Like, I'm getting panicky. I'm just, Everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sh I shift my thoughts. Like, my Do you do son. that with thinking alone? Or do you, like, you mentioned the three rule. I've never heard of that. But does that mean, like, touch three things so it takes you out of your thoughts? Or... I mean, you could do it that way. You, you could do it how that do you way. manage uh, the anxiety attacks from getting out of control with your thoughts? Um, so there's a lot of different techniques. And like I said, now that it's becoming a normal in society, especially after COVID, mm -hmm. like they say mental challenges took over everybody. But um, so if you look on Instagram, it's everywhere, right? You mm -hmm. type in the search bar, explore anxiety or whatever. And there's all types of techniques. There's people that ground themselves. They take their yeah. shoes off. They walk on grass or they meditate or you know there's this new thing that i've seen where like they sway their arms back and forth hmm. really fast and it's like supposed to take you out of like a mental state or whatever 
Um, but for me, it's like gratitude or knowing like, mm. you know, knowing, okay, the worst thing that could happen is I may, I might, I might faint. Right. But that's not, you know, that, that crazy. I mean, yeah, it's crazy, but you know, like that everything's going to be all right. You know, just get out of this mental state. Like you've been here before, mm. you've been here before, switch your thought process. Like, because you could think all the way, shit, I can't breathe. I'm about to pass out. The car's about to wreck. I'm about to fall off a cliff. I'm about to, and it could go down that hole if you let it, right? But if you shift your brain like, oh, man, next month I'm supposed to go to Disneyland with my son and we're going to have fun. And, you know, then you start to feel gratitude, right? Mm. They say gratitude is the opposite of anxiety. You can't feel both. Mm. They say you cannot feel both. You can't feel gratitude and you can't feel anxiety at the same time. Yeah, I never thought about that. Of course you can't. Those yeah. are pretty polar opposites. So do you ever think of previous memories like when your son was born to – to help that too, to create the gratitude? Um, somewhat, you know, I just, I just think of like good times, you know what I mean? Good times that we have together and, and, you know, good times that we're going to have together. Um, you know, like I said, vacations, a, a lot of it too is, is that fire, a lot of that fire that you guys see on Instagram. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to take myself out because none of these other motherfuckers are going to take me out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if I'm my worst enemy, then like, let's go. Like, and it created like this, this fire to where I'm like, cool, anxiety. All right, I'm gonna drink this Trenta coffee. Let's not breathe and let's fucking do this yes. shit. Like, come on, yeah, like, bring it. Yeah, Send exactly. It. Oh, and that that's a mind state because you know it's. A, <clears throat> I'm so glad you're talking about this because there's so many dudes like you that would never admit it, and they're gonna see you and be like, oh shit, okay, yeah, maybe it's okay, maybe I can get help. I mean, so you figure you figure anxiety right is is uh, fight or flight. Life is fight or flight. So you're going to either be scared of something or you're going to take that shit head on. Hmm. And it's like, if this is what it is, then let's go. Let's get it over with. Let's go. Hmm. Like, let's take this shit head on. I'm going to faint. Let's go faint. Let's go. Give Come me on. Trenta. Yeah. Let's do Bring it. Bring it on. Bring it on. Wow. So for people listening in your shoes that um, are going to just go tell fainting, at what point do you think that they should get help? Like, It's such a personal road, yeah. too. It's hard to speak for other people. but I mean... Mind you that my anxiety situation is different from others, right? Some people are anxious to drive. Some people are anxious for the, I'm anxious about anxiety hmm. because I know how bad it could get and I don't want it to go down that. Am I going to be able to get out of this one? Am I going to, you know, so. So you can get anxiety about thinking about whether or not you're going to get anxiety. hundred percent. Oh, that's brutal. And they say 70% of people are like that, right? They're anxious about anxiety because they don't want to get it. But the whole thing, it's a, it's a, hmm. you know, carousel, hmm. whatever it is. They call it, um, should I miss the word for it? But it's basically taking it head on, right? If you're mm. scared of driving, drive to LA. Immersion therapy? No, it's okay. um, it's uh, along the lines of that. It's exposure. Exposure, okay. Yeah. So, you know, if you're scared of taking a bath, jump in a big ass pool or something. I, mm. Like, whatever it is, the extreme, the extremity of it, do that, right? For me, it was, uh, you know, I don't like feeling held down or trapped or like, mm. you know, if I'm on a, a long Uber, like, ah, can I breathe? Like, mm. what's going on? Like, or if I'm, you know, I have to sit in a movie theater and I know that I'm going to have to be there for the next two hours or whatever, right? Like feeling trapped, feeling out of control. So to me, it was like, let me hop on an airplane. Hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> damn. Let me, yeah, <laughs> let me go let to me Vegas. Just go to the most extreme yeah, version you know. of what this could be. <laughs> and like I said, it's like either you're going to do it or you're not. And only you could control that. You know what I mean? Like, and if my passion and my fire for what I do outweighs this anxiety, then I'm going to beat it this way, right? Because I'm not going to let anxiety take me out of my spot because now I can't you know, travel to Vegas to DJ or I can't travel to LA to DJ. Like I'm not going to let it take me out that spot because mm. I love this a lot more than I fear that, you know? Mm. Yeah. Damn, dude. I would have never go look at his Instagram. I would have never known that. Yeah. How, how do you, when you're in the worst of it, like you mentioned, and you've got to go do uh, a big show or whatever, how, how do you do that in that state? Just, just go, just do it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, um, you know, obviously having, having, uh, you know, backup, like, you know, like I said, I always do, I have a plan A, B, C, you know, um, you know, having an opener with me, right. If mm. I, if I need to go take a break, like, you know, hop on, oh, back on, yeah, whatever. Yeah. um, but for the most part, yeah, just, I mean, and the other thing too, is when I'm in my zone, 
I am fully in my zone. Like it's hard to, for me to break that. And in my zone, I mean, just fully focus on DJing mm -hmm. and, and doing, you know, performing. Um, so if I may be anxious going into that while I'm in the act, I'm not anxious because mm -hmm. I could only think, you know, cause the way I move, I move quick and I'm doing all types of stuff. So just fully present. Yeah. Time. Okay. So it's like, I may be anxious going into it, but as I'm in the moment, I'm not anxious. And then by the time I come off, it's like, well, what is there to be anxious about? Everything's mm. over, you know, right? Hmm. Dang. Well, I hope, uh, I hope it stays level for you. It sounds like you're willing to endure a little bit of pain and not run to meds, but if you need them, hopefully you're open to them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, uh, a lot of pain, actually, you're willing to endure, not just a little. <laughs> it's rough, man. It's Full rough. Send. It's rough. But uh, like I said, I mean, everything being vocal about it, you know, coming to talk to you about it, like, I feel like that's a step in, in a direction for me, right? Because it's something I've never done publicly. Um, I have, but I've had podcasters delete them. Like, um, so it's like admitting it and letting people know. Cause that's one of the things of, of anxiety, right? Oh man, I'm gonna look like a yes, guy. yes. Um, and they say, you know, like if, if you start dating somebody or whatever, like just let them know it's yeah. gonna huge, it's gonna relieve huge pressure that's on you to not do that, right? I just got goosebumps. Yeah, it really it lessens its power. The yeah. more you talk about it, whether it's anxiety, a traumatic event, problems, or whatever, the more that you fearlessly talk about it, the less power it has over you. hundred so. percent. And like I said, I mean, and, and you know, this conversation and it helps could, others. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This conversation could help this person like, Holy shit. That's what I've been feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm not going crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, because in a sense, that's what you feel like. You feel like, fuck, I'm losing it. I'm going crazy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there is options out there. There is, there's a ton of things nowadays, mm -hmm. especially like now, like, like I said, it's becoming a new norm. So it's like, you know, whether if it's yoga or therapy or exercise or just, you know, some type of anxiety group or something, you know, like, um, or just hop on YouTube, look hop at common on YouTube. symptoms, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. cause there's a difference too. If there's something going on that's creating anxiety and you've got a high pressure gig coming up or you've got a big job or something went wrong personally, you broke up, that makes sense. You're going to have anxiety. But yeah. if you're in that situation, like you're describing where nothing's changed, nothing's wrong. And I can't quite put my finger on why I'm messed up and I'm, I'm, my throat's closing up or what, if I could just think about what's, what's upsetting me, I could solve it. And then this problem would go away. That's anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Know? No, I mean, I think for me, the biggest thing was like a new symptom, right? Like, hmm. oh man, I've never had this before. This may not be anxiety. And then you look it up and it's like, oh, that's a symptom of anxiety. Hmm. Like, um, or you just, you get relief from it. Right. Like, um, you know, the throat closing thing. I'm like, this is an anxiety. I feel it physically. Like you look it up and it's, you know, it has, everything has its name, right? Yeah. Like, I've never heard of that depersonalization stuff from depersonalization. Anxiety. And that's, that's one of the scary. most common, that's one of the most common uh, anxiety yeah. symptoms. I don't think I've had that. So yeah. you just feel like you're like a first person video game or something like you're it not feels like you're in a movie. It feels like, like a non reality, like it feels like you're in a dream state. Hmm. Um, and for some people it would freak them out, right? Like, for sure. why, why do I feel like this? Like, how am I seeing life differently? Um, and that's always been, you know, like I said, since a kid, like, and I didn't know how to describe it. I didn't know what it was. There's no Google back then, mm -hmm. or there might've been, but you know, there's no YouTube. And then you look it up and it's like, fuck, all these people go through it. You know, there's, and you know, like I said, YouTube is one of the biggest helpers nowadays, right? You have a problem, you have a kink in your neck or whatever it may be, you go to YouTube and they'll tell you how to take care of it. Yeah. You know, they'll tell you to build a house on there, whatever you need. Um, so that like for, for those mental health challenges, it just is, you know, the same thing, right? There's, yeah. there's a ton of podcasters or whoever on there. Yeah. I, dude, I just want, you know, if people are listening and struggling, like you don't have to run right to meds. There's tons of stuff to try, but mm -hmm. If you're having unreasonable symptoms like you were experiencing, you don't have to live like that. You can, there's, it's yeah. worth looking into. Yeah, you know? no, hundred percent. And like, you know, the doctor told me they don't nail it a hundred percent every time. Mm -hmm. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and you'd be surprised how many people, you know, you could Google how many people are on antidepressants, how many people are on anti-anxiety and there's millions and millions and oh, millions yeah. and millions. So, yeah. you know, it's not abnormal to do go that route. Is it talked about? No. Is it frowned upon? I guess, but why? Right? Like, right. Um, 
so it's like, yeah, get help. Like you, nobody should suffer in life, right? Nobody should go hungry. Nobody should suffer. And yeah. if there's an answer or access to things, right? You have access to medication. You have access to therapists. You have access to whatever. Or information. Information. Like saying, because that yeah. gives relief too. Oh my God, I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm not crazy. No, 100%. If you guys enjoyed that, check out Gavin's episode. This is another very strong man getting extremely vulnerable, sharing the adversity of losing his daughter and how he got through it to help other people. I hope you enjoy.